in six months? Monkey pox. I told him, I'm, I, I have to turn into, I'll turn into a full-blown baboon before I take a monkey pox vaccination. I'll be preaching a message. Oh, 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 oh. And y'all better amen me too. <laughs> I'll be jumping on the seats. Oh, 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 jumping up on everything. Because I ain't taking it. I take my chances. Amen. That'll give me some, some good abilities to swing on stuff and peel stuff with my feet. I can eat a banana and check my email. Just, I have some. I say, what are you worried about? And you know, when you're worried, you start doing crazy stuff. When you worry, it messes with your prayers. Worry changes your prayers. All your prayers, oh, oh Lord. How you start your prayers, oh, oh Lord, like he can't see the future. <laughs> but when you're worried, it changes your prayers. Look at somebody and say, what are you praying about? What are you praying about? Have you ran your prayers by the will of God? When you worry, you don't run your prayers by the will of God. Because there's security in the will of God. Amen. James 4 and 3. You ask and do not receive because you ask how? Wrongly. You running the wrong, you praying the wrong prayers and aren't running them past God. You ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You got to pray the will of God. That's one thing I teach here. That's one thing we've been teaching here since the old building. Will Ford used to, remember he did the prayer sermon over there. And he's the one taught me that about praying the scriptures. And how to pray the scriptures and get things accomplished. But those scriptures are the will of God. So if you're praying the scriptures, you're already speaking what should happen. But when you're praying because you're worried, you're saying stuff that don't make sense to God. He's trying to figure out why you don't trust him. I would be insulted if one of my kids came to me and said, what we going to do? That would insult me. You know why? I'm in charge. So that means I'm going to figure it out. Have I not always figured it out? I'm going to figure something out. So you don't have to come ask me what we going to do. So we don't ask God. You know, fathers, we're just examples, a kind of example of God being a father. So we don't ask God what we going to do. God's like, you sit there and talk to me and commute with me and I'll let you know what to do. Amen. When that whole pandemic first started, I sat back. I was like, you know, I didn't know what to do, but I knew God would tell us what to do. Amen. And one thing I know he told us to do is to keep having service. So we kept having service. We didn't know what it was. We didn't know what was going to happen. But I knew God. So many people pray and never see the results of their prayers. This is this generation. But it's sad because this will always discourage you and cause you to start doing 
before praying. So when you don't see results of your prayers, you'll start doing stuff and trying to put prayer on it. Yeah. When you do that, you're asking God to christen your decisions instead of you following his orders. Philippians 4 and 6, be careful for nothing, but in how many things? How many things? How many things? Everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your what? Be crisp. So you don't do nothing without prayer supplication with thanksgiving. Then you let your request be made known unto God. You know why? Because this will cut down on a whole bunch of foolishness that you bring in before him. Yeah, if you go to prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, see the thanksgiving part is real important. Because you'll get caught up, I, this is what I, you'll get caught up in the thanksgiving part and you'll forget the petty stuff you asked for. You'll start remembering the things that he's already done. God, I need a brand new car. shoot toot toot. Because that's the way my car sound now. shoot toot toot. I need a brand new car. And then you go to praying and thanking God for it. Thanking God for the car you have. And then the Holy Spirit start reminding you when you was walking. Yeah. Buying a bus ticket. Riding that bus with old crazy folk. You know, they put anything on the bus. If it's got hair and teeth, they're going to put it on the bus. <laughs> Amen. Some of y'all rode a greyhound somewhere. You know. <laughs> the greyhound is just... <laughs> that's the deposit box with wheels. Anything. You might be sitting next to Jeffrey Dahmer on the greyhound. He sizing you up, just, mm, mm, yeah, that, that'll fit on my plate. <laughs> yeah, you start thinking back, so you get thankful, and you forget you, Lord, forget I even asked. I'm thankful for what I have. Thank you, Lord, for what I have. Man, you might walk in the swap one day, and some keys are sitting on the table. This happened before. Yes. But you thank God for what you already had. So that's why it's important. Prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving. Can I keep preaching in here? When we pray the will of God, we do not have to worry about getting results. God always honors his word, so we must pray his will. John 5 and 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him. See, worry is the opposite of confidence. If you're confident, you ain't worried. You can't be both. So the word tells us this is the confidence we have in him. If we ask anything according to his will, what happens? He heareth us. Now, does he answer us right away? No. Sometimes he want to make sure you really, really want it. You know what really wanting it means? You know, we wanted stuff when we were young. We have to do something. Yeah, you wasn't going to go ask my dad for $5 so that you could get the sweets on the, in the lunch line the next day. Well, it was like $1 to get the zebra cake. The zebra cake or the star crunch. I want a star crunch today, so I need a dollar. So before I even go ask... This tall man of faith, I know I better have my room clean because that's what he's going to do. That's what he's going to do. He said, Daddy, can I have a dollar because I want to I wanna get a zebra cake. He on his way to my bedroom. Yeah, it's the bed, it's your bed made. Room clean. Yeah, I have to show him that I really, really want that zebra cake. But see, the more I clean that room up and the more I think, get things together, I'm learning something. I'm learning that nothing is free and that I'm going to have to work for the things that I desire. 
Now I'm not saying salvation is definitely free, but all of these other things that you're asking for, you gotta prove, you gotta show God that you are really real about it. Look, somebody don't want to clap to that. God always answers his honors his word. Amen. Look at somebody say, what are you thinking about? When you're worried, your thoughts look like this. Split ends. That's your thoughts. Just your thoughts. When you worry, it messes up your thoughts. Because it start out with one little thought. Wow. They're going to lock everything down again. What are we going to do? And by the time you finish thinking, three, four hours later, you saving tuna fish because the meat crisis has already hit. I went to Outback and they was out of baby back ribs. So I know there's a meat shortage. Everything started looking like the meat shortage. Everything started looking like monkey pox. You got acne, you just, <laughs> uh-oh. That's a monkey pock. Just one pock. I got one pock. No pox. I just got one pock. You don't worry yourself. Worry yourself. Wife come home with a fresh bunch of bananas. Why are you bringing all these bananas? Oh no. It's here. It's here. It's here. You don't worry yourself. Y'all laughing, but you know your mind does that. Everything start looking. Yeah. Look at somebody and say, what are you thinking about? Man, you better work on your thoughts because that's what they're after. They're after your mind. Have you taken captive the thoughts that are not obeying God? You sitting up with your thoughts going crazy. You haven't tried to stop them and tell your thoughts, no, you're not lining up with what God said. I can't go down this pathway of racing thoughts. Then you come to church, you done went down that dark road. Come to speak to the elder and he don't see you. And you try to shake his hand, he talking to somebody else, he don't put his hand out. You walk off, oh man, the elder of this church is jive. Put your mouth on the elder. He didn't even see you, but your thoughts were already twisted. Now everything is twisted. Then you hear me praying. I say monkey pot. He calling me a monkey. <laughs> yeah, that's the talking about people. Because your thoughts took you there. Now you got odd against folks in the church. All because of the way you were thinking. And the devil knows. The devil has... Y'all don't know what a Rolodex is. These young folks, they don't know. Devil has a con contacts. That's what they call them in the phone, the contact. He has a contact list, favorites. He has a favorite list. So when he know you in here feeling away because you caught up in your thoughts, he know the devil's in here to come to you and enhance it. Yeah. Uh-huh, this church, yeah. They talk about love, but you know, sometimes, I mean, it ain't really... That kind of, all that loving, you know. You're like, that's right. Yeah. I was just thinking that this morning. How did you know how to find me and tell me that? And I was just thinking that. That's because the devil had them in the favorites. That's his favorite witch. That's the only reason she's here. Yeah. You run into them years later. Hey, man, what have happened to your family? Man, that church just ain't right, man. I mean, it just, what ain't right about it? I mean, they say that it's, uh, 
I mean, you know, I heard that, you know, I mean, and then, you, well, did they do something to you? Well, no, but see, I heard that the, you know. No, I don't know. Bro, I don't know. I'm enjoying the Lord in this church. God has been blessing me since I've been to this church. I have knowledge that I would not have since I've been to this church. This church has saved my marriage. It saved my children. It saved future generations. This job, this church has got me a great job. I've had this job. God has blessed me on this job. This church has blessed my finances. Ever since I came here, the word that is being preached has shaped my life and changed me and made me and keeps me. I thank God for this church. So brother, while you walking around worried in your thoughts, because the devil whispered something in your ear, let me tell you what's really going on at Adam and Believers Council. <laughs> Can I keep going in here? Folk crazy, man. And you believe it? <laughs> ain't nobody talking me out of nowhere. Where they ain't done nothing to me. Pastor's been kind of nice. He talks to people. He helps people. All you got to do is ask him. He's going to be there. He's going to do whatever. So, Amen. Amen. Try that at the mega church. But have you taken your thoughts captive that are not obeying God? You got to stop that thought. You got to stop that thought and say, you know what, thought? You're not in obedience to God because God led me here. God brought me here. That's where God planted me. So that thought right there, I can't, I can't entertain it. I got to keep it, take it captive. And I can't be friends if you feel that way. Bruh, I, I'm not going to keep taking my thoughts captive every time you come around. That tells me that me and you ain't on the same thought process. So that means you're an enemy of my thoughts. That means you're an enemy of my obedience to God. You trying to make me do something that God did not tell me to do. Can I keep preaching? 2 Corinthians 10 and 5, casting down what? Imaginations and every high thing that exhausts itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. Put these thoughts in prison. Every thought. Yeah, the only way they getting out of prison is if they obey Christ. Worry is birthed through thoughts that have been left unchecked to constantly parade through our minds. These thoughts create hot things that take up space in our lives and become more important than God's will to us. So you let the thought linger, it's going to become a high thing. Once it gets enough power in your mind, you can't stop it. Come on, Pastor. Proverbs 23 and 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, what? So is he. So is he. Yeah. When we take our thoughts captive and bring them under the obedience of God's will, we exchange worry with trust. Yes. So when you take your thoughts captive, worry starts becoming trust. Yes. We trust God with it instead of what? You know you can't do both. You can't do both. Proverbs 29 and 25. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall what? Be safe. Be safe. Anybody safe today? Yes. My trust is in the Lord. Once you go down this worry road, you get depressed. Because somebody say, what are you depressed about? Why is it always raining on your seat? You in here where the power of God is teaching you truth. And a cloud and rain is over you. You can't benefit. You can't benefit. I see it, you know, when I have the altar call after service or whatever. Sometimes I, when I'm going back through the video and editing after my son edits the video and I'm looking at the different things in it, I, I just check out people's reaction while the prayer is going forth. 
and I can see the ones that it didn't penetrate. This is sitting over. You know, you can, you can have a disposition where you've already made your mind up because of what somebody said and you're not open to receive what is being given. You know what that's called? A standstill. <laughs> that's your life. A standstill. Someone said the right thing and you're stuck. Yeah, so the word is going forth. That word was for you. But you can't receive it. Can I keep preaching? That's all depression is, man. Ain't no Christian supposed to be depressed. You're not supposed to be depressed. And I'm not going to church and being depressed all the time. That means I'm at the wrong church. I can't get what I need at the church. Church can't fire me up like a pep rally. I can't get cheered on and get some strength and some energy from the people of God. That means there's not much help for me. Yeah. Have you allowed the enemy to steal your hope? Because that's the person that I, no matter what I'm preaching, no matter what I'm saying, no matter what kind of altar prayer I do or whatever, they're just sitting there just praise and worship. Man, PJ was going in this morning. The words were, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. Like what mood do you have to be in for you to give thanks to the Lord? You're not in the mood. And I'm sitting around looking, I'm like, man, look at some of these folks. I want to, you don't want to thank him? <laughs> then he lists the reasons you should. He saved my soul. Made me whole. Changed my name. No longer the same. That's not enough to make you Is it that bad? What's going on in your life that bad? Because basically what you're saying is God hasn't done anything for you. So have you allowed the enemy to steal your hope? John 10 and 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to do what? Destroy. Destroy. But hind come that they might have life and that they might have it what? Not eternally, but more abundantly. Meaning here and now, your life can be abundant. Abundantly better. I'm not talking about money. Somebody think that's a money message. No, your life can just be better. People like you. You treat people good. Good things happening to you. Don't you want some good things to happen? Yeah. Amen. Joel Osteen don't own the patent to that sermon. We do want good things to happen to us. Oh, I'm preaching the truth. Folk gonna hate me. See, see, they hate me. No, brother, they love me. I'm preaching the truth and folks love me. Now, there are some devils that can't love nobody. We understand that. But I got some folk that love me. I got a room full of them right here. Amen. 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 Ain't nobody, uh uh-uh, I don't like that. Oh, no, get away from me. Yeah, brother, I'm going to bring you to town because you just like me. No, nobody <laughs> like you, bro. Nobody. They don't like me either. We just alike. Nah, bro. Nah. <laughs> don't put me on that train with you. That's the terror train. Amen. They may not like what I say. But you're allowing the enemy to steal your hope. But God says, I've come that you might have life more abundantly. So look at somebody and say, what you depressed about? The sins, issues, struggles, 
and failures that we experience in this life must be placed under the blood of Jesus. Amen. The devil is the only one trying to pull stuff from under the blood and fishing in the sea of forgetfulness. That's the devil's job. He will make you think you've never changed. But they must be placed under the blood of Jesus. His blood covers our sins and washes us what? Clean, Clean from them. His regenerative power is continuous. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. And he is a consistent See, Jesus ain't like man. He's not going to keep bringing stuff up. He wants you to be better. You don't get better by somebody constantly bringing up what you did before. Amen. And the devil knows that. That's why the devil keeps doing it to you. 1 John 2 and 1, my little children, these things I write unto you that ye sin not. Look at somebody say, sin not. Sin not. And if any man does sin, we have a what? Advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the what? Righteous. So God ain't trying to put you in hell. Amen. People trying to put you in hell, that's not God. Amen. I don't need nobody. Every time you do something wrong, they, they, they condemning you to a burning hell. That's a bitter person. They should be praying for you. Brother, I'm going to pray you out of this, man. You need to get out of this. You don't ever need to go back to the juke joint. You need to quit juking. Oh, so I'm going to go to hell. I'm going to go to hell if I keep going to the juke joint. I don't know. But I know if you stop going, you won't. <laughs> I mean, and I looked in there the other day, and it's hell. Bro, I think you already there. <laughs> smoking, smelling like smoking corn chips. <laughs> That's the juke joint. <laughs> Bruh. Hey, man. Hey, you know, we Christians, we believers, man. You know, believers don't smoke. Oh, I just have to. Did I have that on the clean up list last week? Clean your lips up. Did I have that on the clean up? We don't smoke. You know why we don't smoke? Because when we save, we don't have to. See, folk act like smoking is just because you love the smell of smoke. But don't nobody, not nobody or nothing, nothing, an ant will curl up and die at the smell of smoke. Nothing likes the smell of smoke. Brother, you smoke because you got an issue. Yeah. You got a worrying issue. An unsettled issue. And you're smoking nicotine. You're using that to pacify what's going on in your mind. This will cloud my mind with smoke. And then if I'm a real ignorant ratchet person, I'm going to add some fruit flavor to it. This is the strawberry black and mild. Blueberry. Like if your lips ain't dark enough, you smoking a prune. <laughs> man I be mean, the first one in the prayer line Lord <laughs> oh, God. Oh. oh they looked at my lungs under the microscope and they said <laughs> my test came back positive <laughs> bro you sp Yeah, so you need to quit smoking. Amen. Quit smoking. Let God fix that. 
Ask God, why do I smoke? Ask him, why do I smoke? He'll tell you, this is this in your life, this, 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 and then you go straighten that stuff out and quit smoking. Yeah. Amen. And quit listening to flashlight. Because everybody got a little light under the sun, they talking about smoking. You didn't even know that. I just like the baseline. Nah, bruh. They encouraging you to smoke. <laughs> Man, I'm preaching to him. I don't care. They need to be placed under the blood. His blood covers our sins and washes us clean from them. His regenerative power is continuous. And he is a consistent advocate. He's on your side. That's what advocate means. Do you know advocate means he's on your side? He's on your side. So he's not opposing you, trying to throw you in hell. He's on your side, trying to coach you into life. He's on your side. The devil whispers our past to us so that we will feel that there is no way out of it. He wants us to feel what he feels and acts like he acts. Anybody want to act like the devil? For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. That through death, please hear this, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is who? The devil. So look, through death, did Jesus die? Yes. So through death, he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is who? Look at somebody say, the devil's destroyed. The devil. He's destroyed. And he knows it. He walks around doing stuff through you. Because he can't do it himself because he's destroyed. He can't come and hurt you. He has to get someone to obey him and hurt you. Because he's destroyed. So all you got to do is deny him access and say, look, devil, I'm not giving you access. I know you've been destroyed. Let's keep that status, bro. I'm not going to let you work through me. I'm not going to let you work through the things that I have. Summary. That was nice and short, wasn't it? I told you I got to get out of here. <laughs> We are not who we once were. We are more than conquerors. We will beat our past issue. Somebody should have said that with me. We will beat our past issues. We will be victorious. Jesus died so that we can have power over sin and the devil. So no matter what the enemy says, or how he tries to count you out. You have already won because Jesus Christ has all power in heaven and earth. And it's his delight to bestow that power on us that believe on him. So look at somebody and say, what are you worried about? Just because things look bad doesn't mean they will remain that way. Just because your past is haunting you doesn't mean that you won't overcome it. Just because you fail doesn't mean you are down for good. What Jesus has provided is far superior than anything you have done or anything the devil can remind you of. When the enemy tries to make you feel defeat, remind him of who already defeated him. Remind him of who already defeated him. Jesus is above the devil. And because he is in us, we are above the works of the devil. So rejoice. Look at somebody say, rejoice. Look at him and say, next time praise and worship is going on, you need to rejoice. Even before you fully see it. See, this is the key. Some of y'all left problems undone on your way to church. 
Some of y'all, the devil was working on you while you were in your car headed to church. So you may not fully see it, but if you believe it and speak it, it will come to pass. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because the devil is defeated. He's defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Book of Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. There's nothing wrong with meditation as long as you meditating on the word. Amen. You don't sit up there and you'll don't do that. Clearing your mind and all it just for one is stupid. Think about it. It's stupid. You cleared your mind, so then what? I don't need my mind clear. Can you clear these bills? I, I don't need my mind clear. My mind is fine. Can you clear these bills and these the, 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 these red slips? My mind is fine. I don't need my mind clear. I don't understand that. That's stupid. Don't do that. All you're doing is getting a demon. You done cleared your mind and you done pushed all of your help away. You freed yourself up for a spirit to attack you. Brought a big gong in there and a <laughs> boy doing something you saw on TV. Come out there walking sideways. <laughs> what happened? Oh, I don't know what. Man, don't ever hit that dog again. <laughs> don't ever hit that dog again. As a matter of fact, I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Yeah, watching TV. You doing what you saw on TV. No, but it's okay to meditate on the word. You need to have quiet time with the word. Yeah, that's, that's all it is. It's just a quiet time. Get the word. Meditate on the scriptures. You don't never clear your mind. You need that. Amen. Now you take the thoughts that don't belong in there captive. You don't clear your mind. There's good stuff in there too. Yeah. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then, oh, woo, let me back up. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therefore. That's why you're meditating on the word because you're going to do all that is written in the word that is required of us. Right? And then, if you do that, this is the right kind of meditation. For then thou shalt make thy way, what? Prosperous. See, the Bible's not afraid of prosperity. You just can't abuse it and tie it into salvation. But if you act right and do right, you will be prosperous. You act right on your job, you'll be prosperous. And the Bible says if you do what the word says, He'll make your way prosperous. And then thou shalt have what? Good success. That's in the Bible. Good success. Anybody want good success? I want good success. Brother, what's your secret to success? I do what the Bible says. Well, brother, I've been trying to do what the Bible says, but man, I just keep... You know, you keep what? Putting the Bible down and not reading it? Yeah. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and what? A person of good courage, don't worry. Right. Amen. So be strong and of a good courage and be what? Not afraid. Not afraid. Be not afraid. Neither be thou depressed. Yeah. De 
dismayed. That's depressed. So he's saying, don't you worry and don't be depressed. For the Lord thy God is what? With thee, whithersoever. Man, that's a cold-blooded word. Whithersoever. That's everything. Whithersoever. You need to learn that word so you can tell that to the devil. When he gets you to worry, it's something to the devil. Uh, whithersoever. God is with me whithersoever I go. Everyone stand to your feet. Look at somebody and say, whithersoever. Oh, that's my new word. I'm adding that to my vocabulary. I know it's an old Hebrew word, but whithersoever, I need God to be with me whithersoever. And if he is, then what am I worried about? Look at somebody and say, what are you worried about? Come on, we're going to break that spirit spell of worry right now. Come on up if that's you. We're going to believe God. Worry stops here. I ain't worried about it. Whithersoever, God is with me. I'm not worried about that. I'm not going to worry anymore. I'm not going to have fear. I'm not going to be afraid, but I'm going to be of good courage. Good courage. No more worry. Breaking that off right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You've come too far. Some of y'all had to fight family to get to ABC. Boy, you had to fight. You just had to fight junk popping up on your feet to stay at ABC. I mean, the devil does everything he can think of to stop you from coming here. Because he knows Stuff is being broke off folks in here. And he knows that the worry can be broken in here. All the devil needs is fear. If he has fear and worry, he brings doubt and unbelief. You'll give up on your whole life and everything he told you over fear and unbelief. So we're going to believe God right now that worry be broken. Everyone bow your heads. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for this message. Thank you for your truth. Father God, thank you for loving us enough. Father God, to secure us in your love. And let us know that whithersoever we go, you'll be with us. Your word has said it. And Father God, right now we believe it. So God, take worry away right now. Every racing thought, every thought that needs to be taken captive, every thought that is not obedient to God, every thought that comes to bring doubt, fear, disbelief, unbelief, every thought must come in line to the obedience of Christ right now. So Father God, we give you our worry and we accept trust right now. We trust you, Lord. We believe that you're going to take care of us. Father God, we believe that you have forgiven us. Father God, we believe that you've delivered us. Father God, we believe that you've made us new creations. We believe that we're not the person that they're trying to say we are. Father God, we believe it. And our actions will prove it. In the name of Jesus. So God, take our worry away right now. Father God, every night we, we, we stay up staring at the ceiling. Can't go to sleep because we're thinking and worrying. Father, take all that away right now. We give that to you right now in the name of Jesus. That our sleep, sleep will be sweet. And Father God, the enemy will not interrupt our sleep. And we pray right now, God, that you will keep us secure with your word. Help us to meditate on your word, God. Help us, Father God, to spend time, quiet time with you. Father God, help us to learn to cast our cares upon you because you care for us. In the name of Jesus. And even when we leave this place, Father God, help us. Help us to condition our minds to not worry. Father God, help us to condition our minds to only believe that that you have spoken. And to trust in it fully. In the name that is above every name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your arms around somebody and tell them, I ain't worried no more. 
Tell them I ain't worried about it anymore. I gave it to God and I trust him and I'm not worried about it anymore. Hallelujah. 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 On your way to your seat, hug somebody else and tell them I ain't worried about this no more. I'm leaving it here. I'm leaving it at the altar. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, Elder. Hallelujah. 